Is, is there not supposed to be a policy for everything mm -hmm. in the council and the government? Yeah. Or is there a council tax policy? To my knowledge, no. I've asked them that question. They can't even tell you. They can't even tell you what the policy is of going to a court. What's the procedure in that? They can't even tell you what the procedure is for new enterprise allowance, even though it says any money you earn is exempt and does not affect your housing benefit, council tax benefit, back to work credit, uh, tax credits, etc. etc. There's a big long list of these things. They can't even answer that basic question. It takes them over a year. They then lie just to get um, a liability order fraudulently so that they can take more, more money off me. But listen to the questions that they're asking because most of the questions that they're asking relate to themselves. Right? They're asking for financial information which they've already got and they've wrote back to me and told me they get information direct from HMRC. I understand that you wind up by this. Right, let me say what I'll say and you'll see it from the beginning. 2011-2012 man benefits, yeah? Even 2013, right? Up to 2014. March 2014 I signed off to start my new enterprise allowance. But they'd already created debts in my name using benefit sanctions and it sanctioned my housing benefit. Well, how can you sanction my housing benefit, you know, when I need a, a place to live <coughs> and I don't actually have any income? <coughs> Therefore, you should be paying the housing benefit. So what they've then done is to try and force people off the benefit. And as soon as they sign off the benefit, that's when they go and say, right, that claim where we said you owed money while you was on benefit, we're going to push that forward to while you're in work now. And this is how we're going to do it and make you pay for something that you should be paying for because you have no money, right? They wait until you're getting some money. Then, say after six months, they'll say, oh, right, you've started a new job. <coughs> So we're going to make you pay all your rent, all your housing benefit. And I wrote to them and says, wait a minute, it says on the new enterprise allowance. And I was told by the people who advised me, any money I get is not affect my housing benefit, council tax, all of that. You've affected it. Right? I'm still on new enterprise allowance. I was also further told that if I do any work and make any money from the no, work that I'm doing, I have, I have, and they've not responded, Kev. What they did is send a 192 page fucking bullshit book, a book, a fucking book. They can't read my little slim things, right? But they send a fucking book. Can I have a look at that book? You can indeed. We're going to do a whole show about it. But I'm just giving you the overview right now. So what they've done, right, <coughs> is bid bond. Bid bonding is raising the amount of value unlawfully to a, a, a debt or a bill that they have an interest in raising the debt or the bill. And it's the same as, 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 a, as a corporation um, doing their, their own promissory notes. Securitization. Their own securities. Securitization right. is illegal. Mm -hmm. Corporations. And for the council. Because they operate under all these different hats and umbrellas and they have to have accountability. So what they did is they messed about all at the beginning of the start of New Enterprise Allowance, having already sanctioned me, sanctioned me, sanctioned me, sanctioned me, sanctioned me, sanctioned me, sanctioned me. Then in the December, sanctioning me all over the Christmas, all throughout the Christmas. And then they sanctioned me again from the February right to the March to kill me. They not just sanctioned me, they refused me access to the food banks because the food banks, you had to go with a ticket to get any food. <coughs> they refused me access to the food banks. Right? And these sanctions weren't because I wasn't looking for a job, because I got a job, and I got a job right, right. with no these help. These are all there. symptoms of a court. These are all symptoms of something. Oh, oh, yeah, they are. But let me finish my story, and you'll, you'll really grasp it. So, from 2011 to 2014, com complete sanctions. Right? I won that case during that time in 2012 against the Secretary of State, and, his, and the DWP refused to court order. They refuse to pay my benefit, even though the court order says it's been overturned and there's no one higher than Secretary of State. So why the DWP said that? All those people who are lower is it because, than the Secretary well, of State. Is it, is it because the DWP are now a separate corporation from the government? We'll get into that in a minute. Well, 
Well, let's stick with what they, they claim to be. Never mind what they are now, what they were operating well, under then. I'm saying that because Clem different. was saying that he, he sees them as nothing more than, you know... Yeah, you could view it like dark, that, but they've got responsibilities well. and duties. They're the one making that decision. And they're making money and claiming tax and all the rest of it under false pretenses then. And they're acting as imp imposters. Right? They're supposed to help people when they're not in a job, and they're supposed to help people with the cost of rent and things like that, and make sure that they don't end up incurring debts and bills. And the opposite occurred. And then, to justify these debts and bills, they wait until you're in work to bring these debts and bills to you. Right? And they do it incrementally. They'll wait six months, and they'll talk about the six months that you're at now going onwards. Then they'll go back a little bit more. And this is what they've done with Traffic Council. They went back into 2013 and, and, and said... I must pay council tax when I'm on benefit. They went into 2014 when I was on new enterprise allowance and they said I must pay council tax. They're now saying I must pay council tax for this year even though um, six months ago, or not even that, a few months ago, they said they owed me money. Right? And they was late paying me that money. Now what's going on is this. They stopped my housing benefit and they ran up a bill of 2200 That was outstanding. Never mind ongoing, what I have to keep, keep paying. So 2,200 out of 4,000 that I earned for the year. They then took 800 for council tax for 2013, 2014, right? Understand that, and that's way more than the council tax that they're asking for this year, right? They've, they've gone to court, given themselves liability orders, they've kept my paperwork out of the loop. Always taking my paperwork out of the loop. That's why I have to put it online. That's why I have to expose people. And it's time for faces to get on cameras. Right? Faces who talk the shit. Because the next thing is that face is going to be in court with me. Have you, have you, right? once, have you once done the N244 uh, claim for? Yes, I have. And they kept sending it back. Uh, it was for that housing thing, right? I well, sent it wait, and I said... Did you put it in the court? I, I, I put it in the court. I filed it into the court. Found it yeah, and they kept sending it back. And then when I sent it the last time, they didn't send it back, right? I went in the court and I said, this needs to be moved to the Queen's bench. And the judge that was there refused to move it to the Queen's bench. He then said to them, did you receive any paperwork? Because I said, we've got a tacit agreement. And, he, and they said, no, we don't. Everything we get goes on the computer screen. We don't know anything about it. And I said, that's untrue. And he says, well, I don't have any record of it. He says, that's not true, Your Honour. He says, you've got everything in front of you. So, I've recorded the bastard anyway. Recorded him. And everybody needs to record every single, every single minute of every single word of every single day of these people because they're talking bullshit night trust, and day. I didn't trust the guy in uh, his advice. No, because he works for the Law Society. The Law Society so don't I, give I, two fucks. I brought that up. And I brought that up with him. I said, this has got nothing to do with Law Society, has it? It took a while to answer. What did he say? He's lying. He's told you something that's not true straight away. He's lied. And he's... Everything after that and everything before that. Now, he's liable for. It says clear as day that the, 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 the citizen's advice is part of the law society. It has to be to understand the rules and regulations that he's talking about. They have to send one of their people into the, the people to explain things. Someone who doesn't have any clue what's going on with law and procedure can't explain things, can they? So why would they be there then? Just claiming a wage just to fob people off? Then they need to be taken to court as well because answer this question, answer that question, answer that question. You can't answer it, you're a fraud. I'm taking you to court because you've done me damages. You can't even give me good advice, you're giving me the wrong advice. And it's your entire job is to give me the right advice. End of story. We've got to start picking off the henchmen and getting to the fucking men at the top because the order followers are in it together. They demonstrate this by this bullshit. So at the Traff at Trafford Magistrates, do they own these magistrates? It seems like Trafford Council own these magistrates. Because I still ask them the question, is this even a fucking call? Can't answer it. You know, this is the, the only documents I see with crests on it is theirs. Why is there not one for the court? Because it's not a court, right? This is a bullshit letter. So at the court, a liability order was granted against you. 
lose you the amount you currently owe, which the liability order relates to, is 567. You should pay this immediately, unless you've agreed an arrangement to avoid any further action. Well, I did that with my last letters, yeah? Avoided it. So under the liability order, you must give us the following information, which I've already done and they've got online, and I've got a receipt from Traffic Council. Not just a receipt from the post office and the sign for it. I went in Traffic Council and they stamped it. They stamped the back of my document with their stamp and the date. So I don't see why he's still asking for my name and the address of my employer, which is in that information. I gave him a wage slip, and it's got that. It's got my payroll number on that. The amount I earn is on that. The deductions taken from my earnings, I told them. Right? Because that's like how much you tax you pay, etc., etc. And it's on the wage slip. Any other sources of income I receive, for example, state benefit, I sent that, universal credit. And I also told them, because I'm in receipt of universal credit because I don't actually earn enough money to live. And nowhere in the universal credit calculation does it talk about you need money for council tax to live. Right? Number one. Number two. There's well, so just, many exemptions. I'll just pop there's so many exemptions just, just on pop, council please, tax. Just pop, I've asked them. Please just pop it in there for a minute. What was that last thing that you just said? There's nowhere in the calculations does it show any calculation for uh, council tax. The body that they calculate is for money to live. Well, if, if, if that's the case, does the council need that money to live? Are they so desperate for that money that they need it to live? Exactly, because the Leviathan, the monster, which only exists on paper and eats money and is thankless, you know, and is actually people doing jobs, but actually they're feeding and keeping the machine alive. And just to keep the machine alive, they will actually do wrongs and harms. It's now apparent because, first of all, they're talking, wasting my time by sending me another letter which I charge five grand for, and they've not even paid me my money for servicing this order, which was already serviced remember and stamped and received by them and, and put on their system and then it's saying I must send this information or it says you must whoever you is send this information within 14 days of the date of this letter if you provide false information we may prosecute you for what for what Prosecute me for what? Have I trespassed anything that you own? Right? We may prosecute you, prosecute, persecute more like, persecute no. you under regulation 56 of the council tax. And then in brackets again, administration and enforcement. So paper is coming to kill me, is it? Paper is coming to take stuff off me, is it? Paper... Needs to live, does it? Regulations of 1992. They couldn't even tell me the Local Government Act 1888. But they want to tell me something from 1992. How many hundreds of years does that Local Government Act 1888 precede that? And it's still in effect. It's customary. Yeah, and I've, I've told... I've they're, they're, they've changed our customs. They're trying to change our customs in this country. Yeah, because all these tax things are voluntary and there's loads of exemptions. There's exemptions from paying income tax. There's exemptions from paying council tax. There's exemptions from paying housing benefit. There's exemptions for everything. And so, when I'm asking them to tell me what all the exemptions are, and you can't tell me, but I can see clearly, you've got some here, and it says these are just some. What are all of them? I want to know all of them, please. You don't want to do your job, ever, but you want me to run about for you. Like, I, listen, this is well, how is it, it really is goes. It, is it, is it, they've not, is it tried not to time to say to them that, that it is your job to actually do your duty? No, what we need is, a, your duty is an audit. Maths doesn't lie. 
Your job is to do your duty. Maths doesn't lie, my friend. They need an audit. Duty. Contract. What is their contract? The highest form of... We need to look at each person's contract in the job. Duty is the highest... Form of law, yes, okay, exactly. and morals and ethics are the highest form of duty. So we need an audit because we need some truth and transparency. They've charged me two thousand two hundred for my housing, and they've also charged me for council tax eight hundred pounds. So what's two thousand two hundred plus eight hundred? That's three thousand, yeah. For an entire year, I'm expected to live on one thousand, but that's not where it ends because there's other monies that they've tried to also backdate because once they got that first bit they've then gone back before I was even in a job before I had any money of my own and said I owe money from then which is clearly untrue and they've gone to court and lied and got that one through because I'm working my new job I've just started my new job I can't take time off to go into court to answer your bullshit. I answered you on paper. You've lied, right? And you didn't send me any court documents. The same like they've not sent any to you. Because it's not coming from the bailiffs. It's coming from these people. And this is an opportunity right now, while it's at this stage, to send Ian Duncan, Director of Finance, of Fraud in Finance. Right? I want an audit. I want an audit going right back to the beginning of my life. Which I've already asked him for. You can't give me an audit. Instead, you want to make up bullshit when it's easily provable. Right? I've earned this amount. The amount you've asked from me is more than I've earned. It's more than I have earned. And because they've done it, changing the law retrospectively, going back in time like they've got a time machine to travel back into their paperwork and say on this date in 1982 we'll change a figure. On this date in 1977, we'll change a figure. And so on. So that when they're ready, they want to then say, you owe money from before and before and before. Well, why are you bringing it to me now? Number one, that's a bit late. How come you brought this one before this one? That's confusing. <coughs> I think you're deliberately trying to confuse me because you're trying to obfuscate the truth and put pressure on little old me because I fucking got your shit sussed out, little demon man. Little Satan, Satan worshipper, little Gestapo, yeah? Little fascists sitting there, shitting themselves, working together with different councils, right? There's Trafford Council and there's Manchester Council. But when I have a problem, as it were, with those people working at Manchester Council trying to pressure my missus, all of a sudden, Trafford Council want to start presenting this bullshit. And when I answer a piece of paper from Trafford Council, Manchester Council all of a sudden want to pressure my missus. I'm not stupid. So they phone me the exact same day when these things are going on. <coughs> to disrupt, try, try to disrupt my flow. And I've got all these things recorded. I've not put it out because I've given them more than enough rope to hang themselves the benefit of the doubt. We're now at the stage of time of no more fucking delay. Fucking wankers want to go to war and send people's kids, not themselves or their own kids, to war to cover up the fucking lying that's going on. It needs to come out now. It needs to be put in a court right now. We need to, all for one, one for all, you need to write my letter. I need to write your letter. We need to start smashing them with community action. Right? No more individual, you're just going to me. It's like, you're going to put a whole street in jail. And that's not going to be in the paper, is it? You're going to put a whole town in jail. And that's not going to be in the paper, is it? Manchester Evening News, they need exposing. They need showing up. They're part of the bullshit. Part of the hiding the truth. Talking an agenda. And never, ever, ever showing any part. Oh, that's contrary to their lords and masters. Who they serve. I mean, anybody with a bit of journalistic integrity would go and research the things we're researching and I don't see how they could find any fault or error in it. It's come straight off the government webpage and it deserves an answer. It deserves one. Instead, we've got bits of bullshit being said about people on paperwork where they'll say, this, they're just to try and throw some kind of action at you to claim more money because I didn't jump straight away and... Fucking bend over and show my anus.
to who the fuck, who the fuck are you? Who are you? I want to know who the fuck you are because you keep writing to me, trying to torment me and then sending people who work for you, underneath you, who are poor and scared of losing their job to come and harass me and they've got a clue what you're doing at the top. And I know exactly who it is. It's Ian Duncan. And I'm sure he's related to Ian Duncan Smith. Just wearing a different hat. Where does Ian Duncan, where's Ian Duncan from anyway? Which, which area? Which area is Ian Duncan Smith? Where does he live? You know, which area does he represent? He's got a, a constituent. And I don't know who the fuck voted in him. But anyway. Says a person. Well, we know what a person is, isn't it? Corporation. A person found guilty of failing to provide information could receive a fine of up to five hundred pound. While a person found guilty of providing information could receive a fine of up to a thousand pound. Now, that they're only talking about themselves because this whole document's false information. I've already given it to you, dickhead. So one, it's harassment. Two, it's been paid, and why are you not giving me my money? Yeah, I've serviced the order and costs, my administration costs and that, and they owe me money now, right? Why can't they answer any simple, simple question based on the amounts that they claim that I owe? Crystal Mark, clarity approved by Plain English Campaign. They are not plain English, talk is plain English. When I speak plain English to them, it gets completely ignored, right? So... Everything that I post from now has got to go online, right? But, again, because they try and use the censorship to stop people seeing it so that they can still continue with the action. Now, you've got to understand how fascist that is. You've got to understand that if somebody else even trips over so much as a screw, there's almighty problems, and everybody's looking to, to get some kind of answers for that. But this kind of ongoing, provable, demonstratable bullshit, nobody in the world wants to know about. People say, oh, I've got my own problems. Or is it jealousy? Because they're like, well, I have to pay my bill. Well, you just haven't got the balls to go and check out these things. And even if it's a case of that, I don't actually earn the money to pay what they're saying. Right? Since I've been working, I must pay £500. And then they want to try and add more money when they've already received this information and it's already on their system. So what, they're going to lie? Because I want to know what they're going to do now when they've already got the information on their system. Yeah? I don't have to fucking respond to this, really, because it's already on their system and I've got a stamp there showing that. So they're not looking at their own information. That's what that demonstrates. Because now it's at the point where the cognitive dissonance is so bad I can't see it, I can't see it, close my eyes, pretend it's not there, that's what they're at. Can't say it's not that when they've already got the information, they've sent me a letter after the date of I've already put this information on your system. Don't you look on my system first and then go. But I noticed something the other day when it went in, the woman saying, oh there's some problem, we can't seem to bring up the things that scanned on. So, I think. That somebody's deliberately gone on there and tried to delete things off the system. So we need to go in on Monday or whenever we've got free time and start filming bullshit. And say, well, why has that been taken off? I've got to stamp it. And put that down as something else to sue them for. Wrongs, causing me wrongs and harms. That's another five grand you owe me. I'll take to court separately for every single little shitty thing you do and I'm going to be living off you. For the rest of my fucking life, mate. It's time to... Lose the fear completely and, and put these people where they need to be. They want bailiffs sent round to our house every minute. No, no, no. We've got to bypass and cut that process. Straight to court for that. Straight to court for that. Straight to court for that. Every fucking time. And you keep doing it, court. You're not a true court. And we need to go past that bullshit of county court level. It's got to be high court. Appeals, appeals. And people have got to be on it all for one and one for all. And vex about it. They've got to be pissed off to be motivated. I'm not shouting. Sorry, I'm shouting, but you've got to get to that in your head before you do anything about these things. Okay, okay. Well, I hear what you're saying, yeah? Mm. Now you've said your piece about that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Read my thing, yeah? And tell me what you think. 
Buddha because I've, I've been there where you're talking about. Maybe not not as much as you. You've been through a lot more than me. But I'm, I'm pretty much feeling it. You know that. Oh, yeah, I know. Um, when you're feeling it, you're feeling it. And, and the thing is, I've had a bit of time to meditate on, on what I'm doing. And I've written these letters. I wrote one letter and then I've I, I, I took, took on board what a lot of people have said to me uh-huh. when I wrote them that, that first letter and then it triggered me to write another letter yesterday or today, might have even, no it's today actually yesterday or today So oh, yeah, I sent, I sent them both, I sent them in separate envelopes. So. Cheers. Right. Do it, man. Do Nice. Kevin Tuman, Kev, Kate Green, MP Jacobs. Dear Helen Jones, 23 parking tickets is excessive. This is a ridiculous situation, but a real one nonetheless. Trafford Council have no parking policy, yet the parking scheme in Old Trafford, where I live, has an undesirable effect. This is causing both I and my mother to suffer wrongs and harms. I need the van to earn money to pay my way. I need it to work. I need it to help other people. I need it to visit my mother. She is vulnerable, especially so far away. She needs a car. I am vulnerable. This process is making me more so. We feel vulnerable in the light of recent events. Bailiffs has taken a car from my mother and a van from me. Am I in debt to the council? The rules did not allow for or enable me to access my parking permit. Then I was given tickets. This is abuse. There is no warrant for this. I hope you will consider that it is time and the place to have fair rules for residents suffering financial hardship to allow them access to their parking permit and save them from such distresses distresses as I and my family have suffered. There would also be the additional saving of the time and trouble of the council, the bailiffs, the third party civil enforcement, PLC, who take the vehicles and the courts. A workman is worthy of his wages. Thank you for reading my letter, yours faithfully, Kevin Truman, Principal. Hold fast to that which is good. Yeah, like it. Like it, nice and succinct. It's strong, isn't it? It's strong. That's what I'm talking about. People need to stop, you know, because all the bullshit and, and things like that, they want you to go into their world of laws and rules. But when you're talking the absolute truth as you know it, there's no, no rule that they have that can come into that domain. It's private. So that's dated the second. Mm. That was dated the fourth. Again, Kate Green, regarded Jacobs, Durant Mandois, dear Helen Jones, I want to stand on my own two feet again. And it is likely we need the help of Traffic Council to do this. Was I a fool not to buy a per- parking permit? I could feel foolish right now because I have lost far more than the value of the permit. Was I a fool to think I could park outside the zone except when loading to avoid getting tickets because the cost of the permit was prohibitive for me at that time? Should I have sold my vehicles or taken them off the road when they have been such a necessity to my family and my community? This has been a blessing in disguise for me in some ways. I have been forced to walk more often than I was and this has benefited my health. I have also had some amazing support from people who have been good friends indeed. I will embrace any opportunity to discuss my economic development, I like it, in Trafford with you. Now would now would be a good time to do this for me. I feel motivated again and it has been a while since I felt like this. I am currently seeking careers advice privately and I would like very much to see if there's opportunities for me to develop in Trafford. With your help, I can do this better and more f- efficiently. I want to turn this experience into a positive thing where everyone is a winner. I had nearly given up on my life and I have been shown I have more to lose than I considered possible. I've been forced to reassess my values and my needs and to remain positive in difficult circumstances. Some good will come of this, I am certain. The parking situation is a side issue in my life. 
which is taking up a lot of my time with worry. I recognise the need for action on my part. I cannot pay £4,000 cash at this time to get my van back, which is what the bailiff is asking me to do. I remain grateful for any guidance with regards to my position. I genuinely wish to strengthen my relationships with the council and all concerned, and I fear that some of my actions may have been contrary to, to this. Please advise. I would like to take this opportunity to give thanks for Parker Services for their help in this matter. For this I am grateful. I value the support in all fairness. Thank you for reading my letter. Yours faithfully, Kevin Truman, Principal. Hold fast, fast to that which is good. Mm -hmm. Not quite sure what I make of that one. It's nice. It's a nice tone. Nice letter. It's very friendly and amiable. But given what they've done to you, and I'm quite surprised that you are, are so merciful and gracious to them. They've not answered a single letter that you've sent to them. And you've asked them simple questions like, show me this warrant. Show me the parking scheme. Show me the rules and the regulations that you're using to enforce things well, by. That, that's because I recognise that there are probably people working in positions, like you say, who are, you know, being governed from above to do these things. And, you know, they, they have a remit, but they also have a work culture as well, which they are constrained by. And I recognise that because I've worked and I've seen, I've seen how it is and how... How they do, you know, the council is uniform across the country, really, in that, you know, they will close ranks on you very efficiently and effectively. Like they will, there's no way through when the council closes ranks, isn't there? there is no way through. Well, saying that, um, but, that, that, that then but, but that, allows them to have free reign to bully who they like. Well, given no, the no, fact that that's certain abusive, people know which well, questions no, 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 are. That's, that's, that's abusive position. Of course it is. That's abusive position. And, and the thing is, for people to do their jobs the way that they, they need to be done, they, they need the support of people being involved with the system for that to happen. You know well, is it right into the... It's, it's, like, it's like changing Superman, because the council is Superman. It's like changing Superman from being the bad Superman back to the good Superman. Yeah, I, I agree with that. That's a very positive message. That's why, from that part of view, you know, I'm quite, I quite like the letter. It's just that, um... It might seem a bit wishy-washy, but I'm, you know, I'm humble. Well, it's good that you, you can demonstrate that within your paperwork. It's good. Uh, the thing that's going to win it, though, is, like I say, keeping it simple. Keeping it real, real simple, even simpler than that. Because, again, these judges, they don't want to read anything pertaining to that. You know, the kinds of documents that should be going in. Right, have a quick look here, I'll show you what I mean. Right, this is going back again to, like I say, the, the incident where, because they stopped my housing benefit, because they're saying I was earning some money now, even though I told them already. I says, well, can you explain this rule to me? Because it doesn't make any sense. It says, any money. Any, what does any mean? What does any mean? And you've not explained it, but you're just, just, just claiming you can take this money without explaining the rule that you're governed by. And then you are right when you've had fucking a year to think about it and get every lawyer under the sun. I, 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 192 I, I, I pages think, of bullshit. I just think, they not, they not, if, if they can get you on an adversary, adversarial... Yeah. Level. Level. Then you're going to miss your only opportunity for remedy, which is yes. discussion. Yes. And talking. And, and pre-action protocol, basically. You're not going to win any case. And I've learned this the hard way without pre-action protocol. And you have to follow the rules. You have to do the pre-action protocol, and the pre-action protocol is not the same as just running the process of, of notice and all of that on them. Mm. You need to show in between that that you're demonstrating human qualities, mm -hmm. because otherwise what's to stop them turning around and doing the same 
thing on us, you know what I mean? It's yeah, things like this. It's things like this. Tit, tit for tat, doesn't, tit for doesn't work yeah. here. Well, we're not we, adding we, tit we for have tat. To, we have to add in the human element. But what they're trying to, to do, they what they're trying to do up. is use people. You, they get paid it's like It's like reasoning with a cyborg almost, because it's got human elements, but it's got machine elements as well. And it's got, and it's got a very greedy, paranoid brain. Listen, they're, they're trying to backdate money off me and saying that I owe five hundred pounds for when I was on benefit. How's it got to five hundred pounds? Where's that five hundred pounds come from? Jules, what, what, when did I borrow five hundred pounds? You've got problems, I know that. Right? And they can't answer that. But just, they just carry on. Right? Right. And most of it just gets ignored. But let me give you the remedy, right? Because I sent this into the court last time and this is what they they're in breach of now. The record. Right? Notice to agent is notice to principal, and notice to principal is notice to agent. Which means the principal is the chief, the CEO, the top guy. He's been noticed as soon as the agent is noticed. And if the agent doesn't notice him, it doesn't matter, they're still all liable. And the same if the principal is noticed, every one of his agents, everybody that works under him, is supposed to re read that notice. You understand? Like when you put a notice up and the council says, we're noticing this community, we're going to do some development work, and you sit on every lamppost and all the rest of it, within reason. I don't have the kind of money that they have, so it's up to their boss. And once it's on the system, this is why they try to hide what's on the system, on the computer system. I've scanned documents in, and they've now started playing about with the scanned in documents, so nobody can see it. But this is what's going to have to get revealed now, the, the constructive fraud that's going on. So it says, in the county court at Manchester, case number 4PB30933, between claimant, Trafford Housing Trust, and defendant Julian Motley. Well, they can't claim anything. All they can do is make a complaint. Can't complain. Uh, can't make a claim, sorry. Not done them anything. Trafford Housing Trust is a corporation. It only exists on paper. If I screw up a piece of paper, have I done anybody any harm? Have I broken a, a law by screwing up a piece of paper? And saying that piece of paper has no effect on me? Have I broken a law? <coughs> right. <coughs> so a piece of paper wants to take me to court. And I said, sent them a conditional acceptance. I conditionally accept your offer to appear by special appearance on Wednesday the 26th of... The 11th, 2014, which is a year to the day of what the council tax came through. This is the housing, and this is where I show that they have anniversaries and the Illuminati symbolism that they keep using. All right, they moved it a day, so it doesn't look so obvious. But they know what they mean. Because if you move it a day, yeah, it's neither here nor there. We know what's going on, a year to the day. Anyway. On Wednesday, the 26th of the 11th, 2014, a year to the day when they sent me the council tax one now, and I said, on the condition that any determination or ruling in this matter shall be in accord with the records and the pleading of the party. Now, I made my pleading that we made a tacit agreement and I put it into the record. This is what they kept trying to send back to me, send back to me, send back to me. We don't want that in the record. Why you keep sending me that back? Oh, you know, you've not done it triplicate. Right, it's in triplicate now. Now what? Uh, we don't want to read it. We'll pretend it doesn't exist. We'll take it off the screen. We'll close our eyes. It doesn't exist. Yeah, he's, he's there. Yeah, yeah, you're guilty. You're guilty. I don't, I don't need to look at the paperwork. No, 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 no. You just come in here. You're guilty. There's no point having a brain or a mouth or speaking or anything because really we've determined that you're guilty. And you're just, like, showing us up now. Because we're in some fraud together. Yes, the judge and the council. Because the judge is getting paid just for them bringing it here. So they're loving that. How do we get more people in court? Oh, right, create a bullshit, unanswerable system to nobody. Breaking every law and rule that is written down. So one piece of paper, yeah, which is the council, and only exists on paper, ignores all the other pieces of paper that actually govern that piece of paper, which is the council, yeah? and decides to write you a piece of paper to then cause an actual harm against you using a piece of paper as justification for why some Nazis can come in your house and take your stuff. Not taking into account actually don't earn that much money. Not taking into account that if you actually look at minimum wage properly, 
yeah, and calculate what's the amount, the amount that you could possibly earn even with a full-time job and can you afford to live and pay your council tax, pay your rent, pay all these things with that. Therefore, the calculations that they're coming with are not proper calculations. Yeah, They're based on taking a bit here and a bit there and a bit there, but you add it all up, that's more than you've earned in a year, so how can you be claiming that? And if you add it all up, the time you're trying to waste is all my time so I don't get nothing done. So how do I then pay anything? And it's costing me time and money. It's time to take every fucking... I don't care how small they are. And this is why it's a good thing my sister lost her job. Because what's about to happen is going to take the feet out. My sister's not working there no more. No, they, they sacked her. I think it's a blessing in disguise. That's what I think. She used to work at the DWP and her spirit for working there, she was so depressed and upset and angry and all the rest of it all the time, like, well, if you don't like your job, leave. And she got angry because I said that. I can't leave a job. You don't understand what... I do understand what it's like. I do. And you do, really. Because you've been doing it to people. Well, sorry. What goes around comes around. What's good for the goose. This is the problem... With those people, they don't recognise that they're like two paychecks away from being on the street and homeless. Yet they'll make laws and rules about homeless people. If you're homeless, right, I want a thousand pound fine off you. Because we're mental. Because mental people do that who want to bully people and make any excuse. You see, I'm smashing his face in because he didn't give me a thousand pounds. And all of you better not interfere because I've got a gun now. Why have I got a gun? Because we made some bullshit up and pretended that some terrorists exist. And we showed you a piece of paper, and the piece of paper was a, an indestructible passport, and that's fucking proof. I did not proof is going out. Fucking. I did not allowed to see it either. No, 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 no. Or talk about it. Or think about it. You just all, all of you are guilty, 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 guilty. Everyone is talking out their fucking ass, talking out the fucking ass, and it's like if you talk like that, oh, swearing, that's a fine. Oh, being normal and human. Having an opinion, fine. So I conditionally accepted their offer on my <coughs> special appearance, meaning you want a piece of paper to appear. So by special appearance, a piece of paper will appear on the condition that any determination or ruling in this matter shall be in court in accord, and I also have put in bona fide accord with the records and the pleading of the parties the record is what you're doing now sending letters if they fail to show one of those letters you've demonstrated gross negligence gross malfeasance yeah the list goes on and on so when they do these things it's actually a favor it's a blessing in disguise and they haven't got a clue what's fucking coming next if they carry on because I've got all my documents. And I've got them all scanned as well. And I've got them all shared, as you know. And I share with everybody. Most people are like, what are you giving me that for? I don't want that. And I just hang on to it because, you know, there's going to come a day. And then they've shared it. So I don't even know who's got it now. Because you cannot put any faith in these people acting as a human being. They act as the psychopath. They're working for the corporation. The corporation... Its relationship with people is the same relationship a narcissist has or a psychopath has. Yeah, There's information that they have that they've received and they are ignoring. Ignoring. I've paid my bill. Well, it doesn't matter. You've got to pay me again. What are you talking about? Right, I'm going to take your stuff. Get out of my house. No, I'm ignoring you. So... Back to my question that I texted you the other day about Punch and Judy shows. Yeah, that's not allowed because it's not politically correct. Punch can't hit his wife. He's teaching the kiddies bad things. It's not in, from a comedic point of view anymore because all the, the feminists are very, very, very fucking serious and how dare you tell me I, I can't kill the baby in my body and call me a murderer. I don't want to hear that, la, 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 la. I don't want to hear I'm a murderer. Don't make me feel guilty because you know I feel like I'm going to hell. Now you've got to go to hell, you fucking bastard. That, 
there's something wrong with you, you're anti-lesbian, you're anti-fucking woman because you're telling me and reminding me of morality and it's wrong to kill babies. But I justify it because I've got my career and I justify it by saying, well, you know what? It's a bad thing to bring a kid into the world and you can't provide it at home and a school and clothes and this and that and that and that. But I'm here and I don't, you know, and I was a baby. So the hypocrisy of that. But hold on, I'm not asking the right fucking questions. Let's just blame everybody, you know, else for saying to me that I fucking killed my baby. No, I didn't. La, la, la. You know what needs to fucking happen here? You know what needs to fucking happen? <laughs> they need to go and sit down with somebody and say, wait, wait a minute. Right? That's bullshit, isn't it? What you just said there. That's bullshit. You just don't want to feel responsible. You don't want to feel guilty. I'm sorry if the words I'm using make you feel guilty. However, the truth remains one and the same. Right? And what you need to look at is, if you can't afford to bring a baby into the world, whose fault is that? This, these people claiming to be governed men, claiming that we need them to make our lives better. Are they making everybody's life better? So... Don't be going on about, well, because there's no, you know, the economic prosperity. I can't have a baby and that justifies me murdering it. What about those people in Africa who've got absolutely nothing and they still have the baby and do their best that they can to take care of that baby and take them to school and all the rest of it. And by your standards, they might as well just kill themselves. This is the fuckery. This is the insanity of people. The narcissism of people that's been allowed to develop over years. Because bullying's been going on and it's not been challenged, yeah? Because psychopathic behaviour in the corporation, which is in the structure, which is in the way you are activated in your role, it's like muscle memory. People have got the muscle memory yeah. of psychopaths yeah. in their everyday actions. Yeah. And this is what's going on. And it's very hard to unlearn because it's now a bad habit. It's very hard to not do that. It's like when we say overstand instead of understand, you've just got to keep doing it and doing it until it becomes natural. It's the thing about why body language is practically impossible to unlearn and therefore body language shows you the truth. Never mind what words are coming out of their mouth, that's a practiced art of deceit. What is not practiced is, is converse body language, the opposite body language to the real meaning of what you're thinking, which means that if you're telling a lie, your body language will always revert back and reveal that that is a lie. You are nervous, you are upset, you are angry, you are doubtful, and so on and so on. That's why that show lied to me, you got cancelled. That's why my video talking about chemtrails and the people that who, because it wasn't me talking about chemtrails, this was the BBC organisers and different people and heads of office and heads of state and things like that having a serious discussion about geoengineering that they say doesn't exist. Fucking, you know, um, news weathermen feeling like they have to stop the fucking show and say, you know what, let's just stop the show. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about chemtrails. You see that in the sky? You see, And he talks like a fucking baby, a patronising little cunt using f pseudo fucking science right this guy on my same video right that i put out right which is taken from somewhere in america i believe is a weather reporter and he's, he took the time out to feel like it's his job to answer what chemtrails are you know every time i, I you know i get people writing to me saying that the government's poisoning us and saying it's contrails can't you tell the difference look when the planes are up there the high altitude and the air saturated with moisture so blah 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 and it creates this contrail and sometimes it freezes so no question number one if it freezes why is it not snowing question number two why is it spread out and never disappears i've never seen no weather like that before i mean why is it a new phenomenon why weren't planes back way back in 1980s, 1990s doing it. Now they're talking about all oh, this fuel dumping is what? Fuel dumping! Well, let's go look up when they fuel dump. That's only an emergency procedure. Only an emergency. I'll tell you why. Because they'd be wasting a hell of a lot of fuel if every single journey. They're just dumping the last bit of fuel just in case. Like they're going to do that. Yeah. It's like getting to the end of, you know, as you arrive at your mum's house now, you just got to dump the fuel so that I arrive safely. 
Come on, they're talking, it's as ludicrous as that. It's absolute bullshit. It's an emergency procedure that a pilot does in an emergency landing only. That's brilliant. Let's call our show that. Just call the show absolute bullshit. <laughs> well, yeah, but then people get the... I don't know. We could have a show called absolute... We need call, many shows. Call it absolute bullshit. Yeah, we'll have many shows. And then it'll be like, yeah, this is absolute bullshit. But it'll be in there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? People could watch it then. And so, yeah, this is absolute well, maybe, bullshit. Maybe this is the beginning of because absolute no bullshit. Maybe we'll, it's we'll, absolute bullshit. You we'll have mean? to segue that into this then. This is the, this is absolute bullshit. <laughs> no, it's not though. But it's not. You can't say it's absolute bullshit because then you are being contrary. I like the idea that things are in alignment right now. Not um, order out of chaos. Rubbish. Order out of order. Order out, order out of tidying up. Clean pots out of washing up. Not about throwing the cups in the sink as hard as you can and that'll fucking make it all clean and sparkling and put them back in the cupboard so, so they could be used again. Order out of order, mate. The truth show. The absolute truth. Never mind the absolute bullshit. Cause they, yeah, the absolute truth exposes and laughs at the absolute bullshit of the world. The absolute bullshit of these types of thinking and how we got there. How did we get to this stage? So let's just call it like Django, bullshit. mate. Let's just call it what it is. Absolute bullshit. Yeah. So what, what we're saying must be absolute bullshit. It must be. Well, it must be. Because they must be right then. Yeah. They must be right. And they're allowed to use a piece of paper to ruin everybody's lives. Actual lives. Justify it so much. Because it's like reading a story. Reading a book. And eventually thinking, you know what? I've read Spider-Man loads of times. I can actually climb the fucking walls. You know what? I'm not going to wait. For a small demonstration, I'm going to go straight to the top of the Empire State Building, jump off and use my web swinging and climb down like Spider-Man because this, I've read something is this, is this, and therefore I'm going to believe it. Is this the proverbial lemmings? The, exactly. And the power of myth, if taken in the wrong context. The power of myth, like if people read the Jesus story and then, you know, like, um, feel whatever they feel is a literal manifestation we, 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 when in fact it's start, not we, it is a start, parable and a start, metaphor we need to start letting them know that we want to help them by rescuing them from their contract or supporting them they're already rescued the contract that supersedes all contracts yeah if you will and again the word will is very astute in this case the last will and testament of Adam the first man who bequeathed every man after him an inheritance in this earth. When you read the Bible, the promises are in there. And these people who are at the top are only going off those promises. And anybody else that's in the system must kind of operate according to those principalities that are found in there. Yeah, Do no harm, do no wrong principles. So it can only be in alignment with what is in the Bible. Yeah? Now many people will say, well, hold on, there's war mentioned in the Bible. You say, because that, that's why I disagree with it, that's why I'm an atheist, because man is shown fighting. Well, yeah. What does man do today? Is the man in this world fighting and killing for no fucking reason? And should we talk about it or should we ignore it and will that solve the problem? Are we recording history accurately? Are we telling fairy tales because nobody wants to hear la la la? You know? Don't tell me about local government acts. Ah, I can't see it. Take it off the screen. Don't tell me about, you know, you have human rights. Ah, take it off the screen. It's vampire. It's daylight. It's garlic. The symbolism cuts through the bullshit because when you say someone's a vampire, right, when I'm saying they literally go on somebody to actually drink their blood, though some of them may do, we're saying that they operate and they function like someone who's a spiritual vampire or an energy vampire who takes from others and bullies them and uses the... the just, oh, it's written on this piece of paper, mate. Like, I could write anything on a piece of paper. So you're saying anything I write on a piece of paper is, is true also by your virtue of what you're trying to do? It can only come down to morality. And those that feel that we've got a special position because we've got a gang and we've got a group, well, that's 
showing us what we've got to do then. We've got to be in a group. It can no longer be individuals, but it's got to be all of humanity, as it were, in our group, mankind. the united mankind, the united world of mankind, <coughs> you know, all for one and one for all. In that manner, no failure. In that manner, six foot long spoons. All for one and one for all. Love, are the answer. And anything that they try to take from us, because they're going to try to force a situation like the Hunger Games. And it's already here. And people need to recognise and do something about it. And you've got people that are tired of dealing with it. Like I was having a conversation with Gary last night, and I know where Gary's coming from. He's, he's like, let's just talk about the music, man. Fuck all that bullshit, all that talk that you're talking about. It's like you're there winning. You are right. I totally agree with you. Here's the other side to that, because we've got to live in three dimensions. When you're saying about, let's just talk about the music, I'm at the stage where I'm ready. I can work, I can do it. You've seen everything that I've done by myself. I practically could do it alone, except what fun would that be? And how interesting would that be? You know, it's not about that. It's about everybody being able to come together. All right, you lack a skill. Well, maybe I'm the guy that can edit it. All of you people go and do all these other jobs. Maybe I could do this and bring it together and create the final thing. Or whatever part I play in it. But I don't see people coming together in that way. Not in all for one and one for all. It's, it's very bipartisan and segregated. Do you know what? Leroy's going to move in here soon. Mm -hmm. he played that back room last night. Mm -hmm. And he wants to start playing some music and stuff. And I reckon he looks pretty cool. And he looks on bass. Leroy. He's probably pretty good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I'm going to teach him a bit of bass. Mm -hmm. I could jump on the guitar. You could get on the sax and... Or the drums. Okay. I could get out of anything, man. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Anything that you need. Oh, I was thinking about, what's his name as well? You know, um, the friend you was just telling me about it on there. Um, the drummer guy. Oh, yeah. What's his name again? I forgot his name. Shit. Anyway, there's, there's loads of people that I know that are drummers. And different. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as they're willing to work, because this is what I find out people. Stop. They talk a good fight, <laughs> but they don't want to get in the fight. You don't want to put the cart before the horse with music, seriously. No, you just, it's got to be free, like, love. Exactly, exactly. So. And Gary's one of them people, he, he puts the cart before the horse every time, and he ruins the experience for me. It's difficult to get the Street Sound album out, because he wasn't happy with it. And that's fair enough. And I said, let's do it again then. This, but you have to make a rough demo first. You have to make something first. Yeah, yeah. And listen to it. Like, and, and like give it time to breathe. It's like making a model. Yeah. And he doesn't want to go in and do it again. It was very difficult for to even get a recording. Because I'd record it. You know, maybe you get it kind of right on the third take. And I'd say, let's do another one. Because mm -hmm. there's a few rough bits. And I don't like people coming in my studio. Recording a rough shit. And then saying like, I must edit shit. To make it sound good because that's bullshit right there yeah. that's bullshit i don't do that as you know when you look at my stuff it's practically unedited the only edit that you might see is if i just want to take something completely out that's it but the playing of it and everything that's not edited that's that's played you have to play it tight, you have to play it with feel. you know, all these things that you've got to do. And I listen to Gary for that, and that's where he's got a lot of great information and knowledge. But applying it to himself, looking at his own work, we're all like that, maybe. You know, a bit self-defensive. And that's what I suppose the council's a bit like. You know, they've done this piece of beautiful artwork, as far as they're concerned, and we just write all of it and say, that's a lot of crap. I'm an art critic. I'm a wordsmith. That doesn't make sense. And so that straight away, it's like, well, everybody else likes it. I don't care. I don't. Am I allowed? You've even put in here, if anybody doesn't like it and has a question, we'll answer it. Well, answer my question. I don't want to. Why? Because I don't. Well, that's not good enough. It's not fucking good enough. Right? And that's why things have to start going out on the internet and people need to start sharing it and putting it up like it's their own 
personal page. If they can do it for France, people they don't even know, and the situation didn't even happen, when they actually do the research, they realise, what a fool am I? I started jumping around and said, ah, oh, kill some Syrians, because nothing actually happened. And it was just done so that it'd get your sympathy, so that you'd say, let's go bomb Syria. And they had it all ready fucking lined up, even if everybody in the fucking world just didn't respond. They still was like, we've got to do it now. Because what they're about to do, in terms of law and order, for everybody, is turn it on its ass and say, you know what, you've got no rights. You know what, um, there's only this amount of oil, and you're not getting any. There's only this amount of food, and you're not getting any. Yeah, you can get what you earn, but after that, and still, when you've spent your money just staying alive, buying food, and that's all your money, we're then going to come and say, but what about our bit? What about our share? Like they've actually done something for you. What about all these people that never took a penny from the system and died and they've spent their whole life paying into the system? Where's that money? Where is it? So when it comes down to, this is how simple your letters need to be. I mean, we need to get it down to that. That amount of words. In every situation, any dealings that they're dealing with. Right? And usually, I conditionally accept your offer on the condition. You prove all your claims and full disclosure. Yeah? Failure to respond is your tacit agreement that you have no claims and are 100% liable for your claims. Full stop. Right? And then when it continues from there, where they actually go into taking actions against you, you know, you just tell it straight. You've done such and such. This caused me wrongs and harms. That is unlawful. Full stop. Yours sincerely. End of. No more big, 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 big anything. Because you give them stuff to hide behind. Limit the target. Remove the buildings that they're hiding behind. Time to remove it now. All this cold shit. Answer that. Find a law where it says you can cause me wrongs and harms ever, anywhere, in any law ever. And that's how you beat Smith. They're only the gatekeepers. They're not allowed to be wronging and harming. That's why they even have to make a vote on it and put it down on paper and then more... Because each piece of paper is a spell and it's like, look, believe me. Do you believe me now? Do you believe me now? Do you believe me now? Because they've written 10 pieces of paper, 20, 100, 1,000 pieces of paper with the same bullshit satanic message on it. We want to do what we want and hurt people and take what we want from people and bully people whenever we like because we are fucking insane. Just believe it. Obey. They live. Obey. Procreate. Have sex. Get married. Sleep. Exactly that. Exactly that. Yeah, with that, we'll draw that to a close. Yeah. Uh, you know. People need to know what it is to be awake. Yeah. By the time they get this information, certain things will have already gone through and be gone clear, so it'll be too late to stop the process. You understand? It's time to start using time travel effectively. In the same way that they're trying to retrospectively change the law. Well, that's fine, you went back to that time, I'm going back to that time. To undo the damage that you've done. I'm going to look at the things that you've done in that time. And I'm going to fix the things that you've done in that time, Mr. Council. Going back and back and back and saying, oh, oh, wait a minute. You went back to a time before I was born. You lied. You told something that wasn't true. It's demonstrable that it's untrue. It's demonstrable that two and two is four in any universe. 
I don't care what new maths you want to come with, whether it's common core, it's going to add up to the same thing, or you're going to come up with some bullshit. I'm telling me, what? Well, oh, sorry, it's just an error. Error schmirror. You put it down on the record, and it wasn't true. What does that mean? What does that mean? Compensation. Damages. Plus my original, what I was saying. Yeah, and it's the same thing. They don't want to pay out for vaccine damage payment. They want to avoid the process and, and time me out, right? From I, I first went to them, right, back in 2010. It's now 2015 and they try to time us out. So that we can't make a claim for the vaccine damage. But I don't care, you see, because it's now become a criminal thing that they're doing and it's neglectful what they're doing. And I said, just send me a copy of everything. Every piece of paperwork. And everything that you do needs to be sanctioned by paperwork. That means you need to send me a copy. I need to read it. Then I'll tell you if you can do it or not. They've now, especially in this latter stage, been going into the school, right? And said, oh, we just saw Reveille and, and, and he had a hearing test. What, what do you mean you just saw Reveille and he had a hearing test? Did you ask my permission? Did you tell me he was going to do it when? You didn't. <laughs> so that went in the bundle. <coughs> that I've got to give to you because like I say the next one they get is going to be real real simple like what I said to you they've done such and such it's caused me wrongs and harms this is unlawful end of story end of fucking story hide behind that they've had everything else and if they want to go back into what's demonstrable and they want to make a big issue and a big hoo-ha let's go through the paperwork They love to make it complicated. Send you paperwork and then you guys send a different lot of paperwork. I just write on top of their paperwork. Tired of the bullshit now. Tired of wasting my paper to fucking talk back to them. We're supposed to be trying to save paper. I'm saving paper. Yeah, That's environmental. Yeah, That's economic development. That's sustainable economic development at that. As long as they keep saying it be bullshit, I got to use that same bullshit to respond. You know what? They'll also be developing me economically, very shortly. And you, and everybody else. And we're going to ram it home, and I don't care what they fucking say. Because wait till I get up and speak for Glenn, and speak for you, and speak for everybody else, as well as speaking for myself. Because I'm tired of the bullshit, the bullying. The out and out ignorance. They've stopped their ears on purpose. And now I'm going to take the wax out of them. It's time, mate. It's time. It's time for people to realise that love is in charge. And every law that they claim is a law was created for the purposes of love. And if it's no longer functioning for love, can't even be in there. It's not a law. It's a misbehaviour. And it's someone trying to con you and fool you into thinking they can do whatever they like. A narcissist does that. A narcissist will slap you in your face and say, Oh no, I'm allowed to do that. I'm allowed, no, no, no. But if you hit the narcissist, Oh, I'm calling police on you. Oh, I'm going to get oh, you in the worst amount of trouble. And then they'll slap you again. Because they feel like they can get away with it. And they actually haven't got this empathy like the rest of us have got. And they'll sleep around. And they'll do it in such a way as to justify it in their head and say, no, 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 I'm allowed to sleep around. It's justifiable. But, you know, still expect to have a, a good relationship with the people who they've wronged. Get it simple. Wrongs and harms, mate. Wrongs and harms. You're doing me wrong and you're causing me harm. Simple as that. And it will stop. And this is what Neo means by saying no. Any all them bullets you want to fire, no stops them all. No is a short word. Very powerful and affirmative word as well. Yeah, it 
it affirms a, a state. Just as positive as yes, in that sense, in that regard. But we've become a culture where if you hear the word no, it's taken negatively. People, again, that's where the, the cognitive dissonance for a lot of people, like those that say people are shouting because you use cat locks. That's a cognitive dissonance. They don't want to hear the truth. They just want to find something to pick on. And most of that I believe to be, well, you're a government agent who's paid to try and discredit me and get me involved and waste some of my time or all of my time talking to you about bullshit. Get over yourself, right? Little, little immature child talking about nonsense. The content of what I'm talking about is blatantly obvious. You haven't spoken about the content because you're trying to take away from the message by bringing me down and saying the messenger must be crazy and hasn't got any justifiable reason for doing it. Well, I've got loads of reasons, and those reasons are still not good enough for you. I am me, you're you. How about that? I'll do what I fucking please. Who the fuck are you? <coughs> as simple as that. Leave me alone. They take titles and jobs some of these people so that they can actually go and bully people. There's something wrong with them. Do you want a kind of job? No, why? Why don't you want a kind of job? And I feel the same way. I wouldn't do a job like that. But for those that do, don't they think about that? And if they don't think about it when they're applying for the job, when they've actually done a wrong or a harm to someone else, don't they actually think about it then? Or when they go home and sit in the bath and say, why, what did I do today to people? It's like, most people don't write to me, Kevin. I just take their stuff and they just bend over and say, can you take some more, please? Or they cower in the corner in fear and I walk around like, I'm an authority, I'm Superman. You say they're Superman. They're all the bad versions of Superman, the wicked evil, the, the, the general Zod. They're not Superman at all. Superman exists, he's here, he's right here in this room. Yeah, that's where Superman is. They're Zod. They've got the same apparent powers as anybody else, but that's where it ends, yeah? That's where they talk about, well, don't, we don't want any gangs in the area. Meanwhile, where's the biggest gang? We don't want any competition. This is our corner. That's what they should be saying. They should be saying, the council is breaking bad. And they're Heisenberg coming with their fucking blue crystal meth on fucking paper because you've got to be on meth to fucking accept that bullshit they, uh, they must be on crystal meth because if you send them some reasonable questions they can't answer it they come back with complete gibberish and they've not even attempted to look at what you're saying in an attempt to say well that's not worth responding to we shouldn't have to speak back don't talk back to me just well, accept maybe, it maybe, maybe another thing to put in response is, is, is that nothing else except are you on drugs because hmm. a lot of them are, you know. It's not a case of are they on drugs? Do they accept moral responsibility for what they're doing? You could, you could take fucking Valium or any prescription drug, right? Does that make you automatically an evil person? Otherwise, we'd better take all them prescription drugs off the shelf right now. Yeah. Well, that's another debate. But what I'm saying is, yeah, it's not about are you on drugs or aren't you on drugs. When are you allowed to do something evil to somebody else and not answer for that? It's as simple as that. When are you, when are you at what stage in your job are you allowed to hurt someone or pull their hair or call them a bad name or anything? There's, there's no part of their job description covers any of that. They're now in a totally brand new area. And that's why the, the council will make a directive and fool the bailiffs and say, bailiffs, you are allowed to go in someone else and you are allowed to make threats to them. And you are allowed. They're not. They're not. They're only saying that because the, they know the bailiffs won't actually read or study the law. They'll only just take, oh, the council's told me I can do it. He's got a badge. He's got a badge on his chest. Badge. Like the woman that I 
talk to about she's a paediatric nurse, a doctor. I, I know everything there is to know about vaccines. She's trying to convince me of her great knowledge on vaccines. Look, I got a badge. This is all the proof I need of who I am. I've got a badge. So on the one hand, they'll give information to pensioners and say, don't open the door. Even if they've got a badge, make sure it's the right badge. Check it out if you have to. If you're still not sure, close the door. We don't have to engage with nobody at any stage of our life. You don't even have to go to court. And I've, I've had them recorded the woman saying you don't have to go to court. Well, you're right. And because that wasn't a court. And you didn't go to court. You just went in a room and recalculated some figures. You were the ones who wrote to me and said that I owed more money. I want to see a court record of this, this thing having taken place and who was there. Because then... Whoever was there doing that when I wrote to you, it's unlawful, right? Because it's an administrative court, and administrative courts have no authority. And it's in a law book, and you fail to respond to that, and you think you can just keep it in the shadows and do shit like that without responding to someone asking you pertinent questions and saying simple shit like, it's in a law book. Local Government Act 1888. Vaccine damage. That. 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 What they fucking ignore. Because I am right. I am right. I. And the more that they do, the, the more that they show only I am right. Only I can be right. And therefore, all this attempt to try and bring me down and damage me and damage even my friends. Or people I care about around me. Is based on cowardly acts. Yeah? Batman will tell you about criminals. They're a superstitious lot. Hence the repetitious numbers. They're like the fucking Riddler. Yeah? Writing to me on Halloween. Ha ha ha, trick or treat. Writing to me on the 45th of April. Ha ha ha, Passover. Writing to me on the 1st of April. Ha ha ha, April Fool. Oh, it's just coincidence, Jules. They only did it once, surely. No. They keep doing it. They keep doing it. Over and over. You can see the pattern forming. It's an anniversary thing like them. Yeah? Like the Joker, he's got an anniversary where he's got to come and get Batman. Gonna get Batman. Keeps, getting, keeps showing people. Keeps showing me up. They are acting like the arch ne nemesis. The supervillain. That's what they're acting like. And, and we've got to personify it and symbolise it so that people get it. Because all this talking I'm talking is a long talk. You show them one picture. And you show them, I am Batman. And the council is, you know, like Bane or something. Or the Joker. Or the Riddler. The symbolism of the myth. Or they are Darth Vader. I am Luke Skywalker. Yeah? You are Han Solo. They are Boba Fett. A stormtrooper then. You know? Jabba the Hutt. Whatever you want to... The analogy is there. We have a rich cultural diversity. And it doesn't matter if they try and stop my thing or everybody's Star thing. Star Wars in the Empire, mate. That's what it is. It, it is. They are the Sith. They are the Sith. And they operate like super villainous scum of the galaxy. But the Jedis are here now. We'll see what happens. <laughs>